Hello everybody, welcome to Grace Bear Reviews. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. Today's beer comes from Perennial Artisan Ales. These guys are out of St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, this is a Imperial Stout. This is the 2017 edition. Uh, and they have done several different versions of this, even doing a barrel aged version of this. This is not the barrel aged version of this, but it is a pricey beer. This this bottle here still got the sticker on the back that my brother Rico purchased and picked up. Uh, 1897 is this price tag on the back of this beer. It's a 750 milliliter though. That's a huge. That's that's a lot of beer. So uh, there are beers in this size bottle that are barrel aged that cost 30, 35 dollars and more. Especially if they throw wax on top of them, where they can charge you more for that. Uh, I'm glad this one does not have wax on top of it. Uh, if it did, this beer in 1897 could it very easily be $24 or $25 for the bottle just because they added wax to it. So I'm glad they've not done that. Uh, that's not going to help the beer. It's not going to keep the... It's just not going to help the beer, guys. I'm not a fan of wax on a, on a uh, beer bottle. Uh, the note he sent here with it says, 2017 edition of Perennial Sump. 10.5% Imperial Coffee Stout blended with locally roasted sump coffee. He said he bought it a few weeks back and it was $19 well, $18.97. That's $19. More than $19 once he paid tax on it. And he said from untapped for this year's batch we chose a coffee from Kuwaka, region of Colombia, which provides a classic coffee stout profile full of caramel, maple, and pecan. Bottle on date is on the barcode of February the 17th. February the 13th of 2017. And when I looked it up on Beer Advocate and Rate Beer, it says here, note this label is the same as regular sump with the Adola sticker on the side. And I don't see the Adola sticker. It does have the date above the barcode of February 13th. So I don't see that additional sticker that they're talking about on the side here. But it is a 2017 edition, and that's the one that they used the Adola uh, copy, uh, I guess, uh, on this beer. So, uh, that's all we need to talk about. So, uh, commercial description on this says, uh, I just read it to you, about regular sump with the Adola sticker on the side. I don't see that sticker. So that's a little confusing to me that it doesn't have that Adola sticker on the side of the bottle. So, I don't know. I don't know. I'm guessing here, guys. Uh, that's all I need to talk about there. So let's get this great big monster 750 milliliter bottle open. Uh, very nice cap. i got to see if I can keep that get it on the fridge down there. Let's see what we got. Nice hiss. Very nice hiss. Very nice colorful cap. On the top, we'll save that and we'll put that on the fridge downstairs. So let's get this thing into the glass. I got my favorite snifter, the solid beer glass. Oh, it looks pitch black coming out of there. Let's go down the center. Cheese is a buttery brie, good Havarti Swiss, goes well with your chocolate dishes, meats, beef, smoked meat, game, and grilled meat, glass water, pint, decker. Pint, becker, non tumbler snifter, oversized wine glass. I got my favorite snifter, like I said. It says can be cellar for a long period of time. Straight down the center, about a quarter finger or less of head on that pour. Pitch black out of the bottle. Pitch black in the glass. I see absolutely no light anywhere. 
Looks like motor oil in there. You use motor oil on top of that. A lot of people are scared. When you pour a beer like that, they go, oh my God, I ain't going to like that. It is an acquired taste, uh, but don't be afraid of the dark. Uh, expand your palate. Try different things. Don't drink the same beer all the time. Even if you're drinking Bud Miller, of course, try something a little on the lighter side that you may like. Uh, there are plenty of well-made lagers that can compete with those macro lagers that don't have any adjuncts, rice, or corn, or any of that crap thrown in there. Support your local breweries. Don't support the big three guys. They don't need your money. They're multimillionaires now. Support your local guys. Support your local businesses. Support the local people. That's what you need to do. The Walmart people and the people that shop these big chain stores, yeah, sometimes you're going to get a better deal. But then, when they run all the little mom and pop shops out of business, they're going to jack those dad prices up and you're going to pay out the nose and you have no choices. So support the local people. Support the local businesses. Support the local breweries. That's what I say. Let's get a nose on it. Oh, yes. Big time roasted malt. Very sweet smelling. Molasses, brown sugar, roasted malt. Hints of some dark fruit. Oh, it's awesome smelling, guys. That is awesome smelling. Getting the coffee. The coffee is there. And a lot of times out of the fridge, the coffee's a little subdued and it comes out. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's off the chain. Right now, I'm getting the coffee, but it's not off the chain. Now, that may increase or intensify as it comes up, and it may be a lot stronger on the taste than it is on the nose, but I am smelling the coffee. It smells wonderful. It smells absolutely freaking wonderful. Let's dive in. Final beer of the evening for me. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Rico. Every time I put my nose to it, I'm getting a little bit more and a little bit more coffee. It's opening up, so i got a feeling the coffee is going to be pretty intense. Yes. On the taste, the coffee is there. It is, it is in the front seat, probably taking up the whole front seat. Two spots, if not three. Nobody else can get in the front seat. The coffee's in there. Well, wonderful aroma. It's in the two minutes it's been in the glass. It's, I'm getting more and more coffee. Hell, in five minutes or ten minutes, fifteen minutes or so, it may be taking up every seat in the school bus. Wonderful aroma. Absolutely freaking wonderful. Oh yes, that is delicious. And they make, they make a barrel, a bourbon barrel, uh, several different barrel age versions of this. Wow, delicious. And they've been doing it for a couple of years from what I've seen. This year's, it says Adola. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised I don't see that sticker that they're saying on the bottle here. And, but I know it's a 2017 edition. Because it's got the date above the barcode. Wow. For 10.6% alcohol is super well hidden. That is very delicious. Guys, you could have this before dinner. You could have this with your dinner with a strong dish. Don't think I'd want to have this with cornflakes. Or after dinner, as an either as an aspartame or a digestive, or as your dessert, or with a dessert, go very well with a chocolate dessert. Wow, great big bottle here, enough to pour the other half a, a nice full glass of this, and sip on it, and uh, fire up and finish up that cigar that I got out there. Oh yeah, I'm sure to go well with this dark beer. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah, talk myself right into that. All right, guys, uh, let me step on it for a while, and we'll come back and see where this ends. Very impressive right now. All right, guys, I'm back. Been stepping on it for a while, and very well with the cigar I was smoking. Got conflicting information on the bottle. 
uh, above the barcode here it says 21317. But if you look on the label over here on the side, it says bottled on January of 2017. So they're saying that on the label 2017, but above the barcane, barcode it says February 13th. So why would they put January and then they put February on here? So not a big difference, but the label, the stick on black and red writing label has bottled January 2017. And on the uh, barcode, which is on the label, it says February 13th of 2017. So, which is it? Is it January or is it February? The style of beer is not that critical, you know, month difference in, in there. But why would you do that? Why would you say one thing on the label and another thing on the, above the barcode? I don't, I don't understand that. It is a very tasty beer, guys. It is a very well-made beer. Uh, the only way this could be better is put it in a bourbon barrel and, and I'm pretty sure they did a version of that too. So it is a very tasty beer, guys. A great final beer of the evening. A great beer to sell her other than having the coffee in it. The coffee's going to fade over time. Uh, that would be the only reason I say you could not sell her this beer because the coffee's going to fade. Uh, these beers that have coffee in it's just like hops. They fade over time. Uh, so uh, I don't know. I don't think I would sell this beer more longer than six or eight months, maybe a year tops, because uh, the coffee is going to fade. Final chug. Very creamy. Very nice. Very well done. Guys, I do think it's an eight beer. It's... Uh, if it wasn't for conflicting information and not having that Adola sticker on it like they say it should have, which is from, I can't find it anywhere on the bottle. There's some conflicting information there about the bottling date and not having that sticker on the side. Excuse me from giving it to 10. I'm going to give it to 9 out of 10. Your numeric rating on this, guys, would probably be a 99 uh, because of the conflicting information that I have on it. So... Uh, over to Beer Advocate, they say 90, outstanding. I think it's better than a 90, but it is an 8 beer from those guys. Uh, over to Rate Beer, Rate Beer is very impressed with it. They say 99 overall, 92 in the style. And final check-in, we'll go over to Untapped, and they say this is the 2017. They have specified that this particular one is the 2017 edition, which this is, and they're giving it a 4.44. Awesome numbers from those guys. Almost the best numbers I've seen. The best numbers I've seen is 4.56, 4.57, somewhere in that area. Uh, so 4.44, definitely in their 8 category for sure. Uh, but not quite to the 10 category, which I'm, with the information I'm getting here, and it's conflicting and not having that uh, sticker on the, on the bottle, that's why I'm reserved and giving it to 10. Uh, I'm sure, I would love to taste the uh, barrel-aged version of this. I'm sure it's going to be very tasty. That's the only thing I would say that would make this beer better. Just a, some hints of some bourbon in there. That would probably make it taste just a little bit better. So if you've had this one from Perennial Artisan Ales, uh, this is their Sump Coffee or Perennial Sump Coffee Stout 2017 edition. Let me know what you think. Rico, thanks again, my brother. I do appreciate it. This is a very, very tasty. Great beer for the final beer of the evening for me. About time to have some dinner. That's what I'm going to do. Come on back tomorrow, guys. Let's go see what's in the fridge. If you've had this one, let me know what you think. See you tomorrow.